March the 1st, 2024. Guys, there was an attack across the border, both an attack by Iran into Israel. Today, I think it hit uh, one of the air bases there. It was a drone, and they said it came east from Iran. But uh, also, Israel had attacked the Iranian embassy in Syria, killed three of their leading generals. Now, there's going to be a response to that. You can bet on it. And let's go back to October 7th. Many are saying now that that attack was designed to stop the sacrifice of the red heifer. And uh, I didn't know they were going to hang Kathy Griffin there. I didn't know. I hadn't heard much about that. But I can get away with a few things. You know, it is April 1st. But the main part of this is not a joke. So they didn't want the third temple built. That's got to do with the red heifer prophecy and all that. And uh, it's going to wash away the sins of some of the people. And uh, to me, just just looking at the thing honestly, one on one, thinking about that, how are how are you going to uh, wash away your sins by crucifying or killing? Excuse me. One of God's beautiful creatures. Explain to me that it sounds like a very elitist type attitude in other words we can see and we can do whatever and we'll put it the blame on something else someone else or some other creature so it makes totally no sense to me but i've explained myself about that in a video talking about uh, the difference between el and yahweh and i had said in that video if you guys remember i said i'd always had a problem with the old testament started out with god which was el the creator and uh, he created the, the planet, he created the animals, and it was all good. And then you had the different gods that were assigned to different places, and by El, and Yahweh was signed. He was one of the members of the council, you may say. He was not El, but he was one of the ones, and he was assigned to the land of Israel. Okay. Now, that's when we started seeing, when he started taking over or rising and started changing from El to Lord in the Old Testament, we started seeing the mass sacrificing of animals, hundreds of thousands of them, people and animals. But the, that always stopped me right there, reading those sections of the Old Testament. It just did not make sense until I started studying and realized we're talking about two different entities here. Yahweh is was told or he was given uh, by God by El that land and that people to rule over again that's when the mass sacrifices started never liked it never will I will never like cruelty to animals and if any human comes at me and says well we got to do this or that I mean if they're trying to explain themselves to me I'm going to say sure blame it on the innocent cows they're beautiful creatures. They give you milk and butter. But no, to wash your sins away, you're going to sacrifice them. Do you think that's why the Creator created them for man's selfish, stupid reasons? And by the way, I believe, honestly, the third temple will never be built here. It will be in the third earth age during the millennium and after that. But people are trying to force prophecy. And the guys that we were told, sorry to keep reminding folks, but those that are in Judea and claim to be Jews are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. And it's only people like that that sacrifice the innocent, whether it's people or animals, for their sins. How sick is that? It sounds like some stuff going on in D.C. I just got to get that out of the way. But this attack, Tehran is vowing a harsh response to the Israeli attack on its embassy and consulate earlier in the day, which killed at least five to eight people going through this, reported in, reportedly including the IRGC leaders. Iran's foreign minister slammed it as a violation of the international obligations and conventions, while the Syrian government denounced it as a terrorist attack. Of course, both sides are, terrified, are terrorizing the other. We understand that. What bombing is not a terrorist attack? 
when there's uh, civilians involved. Iran's ambassador to Syria, Hossein Akbar, was not injured in the attack, which appeared to have occurred at the moment of a high-level meeting was taking place. Now, either they have inside connections there, or they have tracked people's phones. You know, Iran's, Iranian state media has since confirmed the death of Brigadier General Mohammad Reza Sahidi, a, a senior commander in the elite Quds force of the IRGC. There are further indicators that two more top IRGC commanders may be among the slain. And this is the ones they're talking about again. Mohammed Zahidi, Hussan Amanuli, he's the chief of general staff. Uh, Mohammed Zahidi was the commander, brigadier general, and major general Haj Rahimi, commander in Palestine. Palestine. Now, um, the reason I'm doing it is because I agree with the article. There's going to be massive changes now in the game. Iran, Iran has basically kind of set back, provided a lot of funding to different people involved in these attacks, whether it's uh, Hamas, Hezbollah, Houthis, whatever. And now it's right in their face. Now are they going to continue their proxy attacks through other agencies that they claim not to support, or are they going to come in full force now? Is this going to be that roar that's heard out of Zion? We're getting very close to some very serious problems here. But it says that uh, Tasman reported that Zahidi's deputy was also killed in the strike. Depending on Iran's response, this could be the start of an all-out regional war. For months now, Iranian-made ballistic missiles and drones have rained down on Israel, fired by Iran's proxies in Lebanon and Yemen. This new brazen, or brazen Israeli attack on Iran's embassy takes things into uncharted territory and also opens up the potential for the Iranians to target Israeli embassies abroad, tit for tat. Now, I would be more concerned with the Israeli cities in Israel, but um, again, nothing's off the table with the way we're seeing the response here, the response between blowing up bridges in Crimea and destroying bridges in Baltimore. The world's in chaos right now, and the judges are acting like the demons they are in most cases. We saw this riot at the border. A couple of hundred folks down in Texas cut through the razor wire, ran over the National Guard, the Border Patrol, whoever was there, and they all got uh, charged. About 100, I think, were charged. But they were all freed on early bond because they said that and it's only been um, a couple of weeks or a week or so ago, seven days maybe, since the event had happened, but the judge said that the prosecutors had not come up with any enough evidence and enough pretrial paperwork to do it, but they really hadn't had enough time, so they let them go. Now, imagine how the J6ers feel. Anyway, same thing, totally different set of principles. Now, the annex of the consular building, which you're seeing here, next to the embassy in the Meza district was flattened in the strike. You can see that. They knew these three leaders were there and other personnel. And uh, they know that it's a tit for tat. But, guys, the October 7th thing keeps popping up into why some of this has happened, what the reasons are. They're saying that many people, many intelligence agencies around the world knew that that was going to happen. And... Uh, some say it was almost allowed to happen. It was a, day, a delayed response in the Israeli military in their response to the situation. Don't know I wasn't there. But it looks like, for whatever reason, if they knew it was coming, didn't know it was coming, or whatever, they, had, they are using this to completely wipe out Gaza as we know it, Hamas as we know it. And they're not going to stop, guys. They came out of that hospital down in uh, into in the Gaza today. They were, I think they've been there a couple of weeks, Israeli soldiers pulled back out, and there's nothing left. It's like they're going to use that. They want to build their temple or whatever motive the different sections in Israel have, and they don't want any resistance in that area. So what for? it's kind of like the Iraqi situation after... Um, the World Trade Center, you know, 
the attacks coming from one way or the other, and it's going to be used to bring about other agendas. And one thing that has happened, guys, today is because of where this is at and Iran's involved in the Middle East, oil prices are skyrocketing. So you may want to fill up in the next few days. Uh, think about it because I think that's going to be passed on pretty quickly to the pumps. And this is the chart, guys, that I'm talking about on the oil situation. We were hovering down here just above 82, and now we are approaching 84.50. Doesn't sound like that, but that if this rise continues, this is something to watch out for because we already had the Red Sea crisis, transportation, big ships coming through there, uh, and uh, other areas. There was already pressure on exports. Now there's going to be even more because... There's going to be a price to pay for killing these three generals. This is just uh, one of the side effects. But it seems the demons know what they're doing in all of these armies, all of them. And they're bringing about ultimate destruction to this planet. War and chaos, it's like they're sitting back and laughing at the horror and the death. Let me say this when we're talking about that. It's not really off subject, but... Guys, when people protest, I want you to think about something. It's um, The politicians are, are like demons, and most of them seem to be infested totally. So, what do they do? They thrive on fear. The politicians sitting in D.C. with a big protest, regardless of what it was, what it is, they sit back and think that they are the lords and the gods because they're setting up and it's like you're begging them for something and they just feed off of that and then when they see chaos they feed off of that fear and death and chaos it's something they feed off of our attention is the main thing our fear but our attention i think keeps them almost alive because they've got to have other entities in, in order to exist from their realm to our realm. And so it's almost like Christ said, Satan, get behind me. I don't have time for this. So like the politicians, which again, I think they're demon class, we need to stop paying as much attention to them. Don't protest. Don't beg them for anything. Uh, turn your back to them. And what I'm thinking is that, especially in the demonic realm, without that attention, they cannot thrive and survive. Don't let them have that fear. Don't let them have that recognition. Don't allow them to be begged to or pleaded with. Those are not our leaders. We have one. And his son is coming to change a lot of things on this planet we got to make it to then. And the best way, I think, to do that, guys, is to the two golden rules. Keep God in your mind at all times. Pray. Love him more than anything else. because you Not because you want to be saved, but because you realize without him you would have nothing. And the other one is treat others like you would want to be treated. And I said it before, if you live just by those two laws, all the other laws in the Old and New Testament that's talked about are covered. If you can just get into that part of your life to where it's not about you. it's a, You know we're getting close to end times. Do what you can to help everyone around you. Tell them about our Lord and Savior Christ. Explain the situation to them, and <clears throat> again, you don't want to pray and ask to be saved just because you don't want to feel the wrath. I mean, that's a good reason, and that may not get you there. What would get you there is honest love, faith, and for for our Father and for fellow man, for our fellow, fellow mankind, women, people from all over the world. The politicians and the demons will never allow all the people in the world to get along. Why? Because it would be an overwhelming majority against a very small minority of demons. But their day's coming. But I'm just thinking that the less 
I mean, we have to keep up with the news as far as what they're trying to do and what they're trying to get away with and all of that. But the protest, they never work. It only makes their heads swell up and their pride swell up. And I think it makes them even more powerful and, and more evil. There's other ways to handle this, and I think the best way is to just, again, the two golden rules and pray that our Father takes care of these demons. But again, don't give them your attention. If you've got problems with people and you think they're, and they are doing very negative things, that's not what you want to be dealing with right now. We're late in the game. Be positive. Keep everybody around you in mind. Help people. Educate people on what you know. Don't hide that light under that bushel. Why? Because it gets taken away from you. It's like, okay, you study the Bible. <clears throat> you understand it. God give it, has given you understanding. And you say, well, that's good enough for me. I know what the rules are. And I'm going to abide by them. And I just keep my mouth shut. And no, everybody go their own way. Right? That's putting your light under a bushel. He gave you that light to shine into the darkness of the rest of the people in the world around you. So when you hide that or you, under that bushel, it's taken away from you. Again, it's like studying a, a book back in college and acing. With, but 10 or 15 years later, you can't remember a sentence in it. I know it's happened to me. You know what I mean? And so... That light will be taken away from you. Exercise the light in, that you have because that keeps the fire burning brighter. It blesses you and the people around you. And that's what we need more than anything is prayer to our Father. Not to save us. Pray to him in praise. Thanking him for what he has given you. Thank him for creating this earth and this universe. And thank him for because we believe in the prophetic words that says he will come and he will destroy the people that destroy this earth. We're watching it, guys. You watch it. It's a heads up. Be safe.